Hi, and welcome to video 4.2 in our series on building a simple electronic structure program in MATLAB. In this video, we're going to implement the functions necessary to evaluate the attraction that an electron in orbital A feels uh, for all of the nuclei. So this is going to be a, uh, a matrix that's going to be NB times NB in size, where NB is the total number of basis functions that we have. Uh, and we're going to split evaluating this matrix into three different functions. We're going to have a function boys.m, which is going to evaluate the boys function, which is going to be related to the integral that we need to solve. Uh, we're going to have another function, coulomb g, which is going to evaluate the total integral of uh, a coulomb operator, which scales like 1 over r, times a Gaussian function, so it's the thus the name Coulomb G, or Gaussian times Coulomb. And then we're going to loop over all atoms and have a double loop over all of the basis functions to create our VAB matrix, um, which will be the third function that we write. Okay. So our boys function, boys.m, if you recall from the last video, the boys function f sub n of x, or the is the integral from 0 to 1 times e to the minus xt squared times t to the 2n, times dt. There are a number of different ways of implementing this. We're going to implement this using two other special functions called the gamma function and the incomplete gamma function. The reason we're going to use these is because MATLAB has already implemented those two functions using a procedure that you can look up in Abramovitz and Stegen. And this function, uh, the boys function, then becomes very simple when we express it in terms of these two special functions. If x is equal to 0, then the nth order boys function is just 1 over 2n plus 1. And if x is not equal to 0, then we can write it as the gamma function of n plus 1 half times the incomplete gamma function of x and n plus 1 half over 2 times x to the n plus 1 half. And for our program with only s orbitals, n is always going to be 0. Okay, So this is a very simple program to write. The next function that we're going to write is Coulomb g, which will take as its input two primitive Gaussians and the location of an atom in real space and an atomic number z. With the two input Gaussians, we'll evaluate, we'll use the Gaussian product theorem to determine the amplitude and exponent of a new Gaussian centered at point p with exponent little p. We'll determine the distance between point big p and the location of our atom. And then finally, we'll evaluate the Coulomb integral uh, for that result, resulting Gaussian uh, times 1 over the distance from the atom as 2 pi over p times the amplitude of the Gaussian times the zeroth order Boyce function of p times the distance squared. And then finally, the last function that we're going to write, build nuclear attraction, will take as its input, input all of our basis functions, our list of atoms, and the list of, or list of atoms or atomic locations and all of the atomic numbers. We're going to loop over each nucleus n. And then for each time we do that, we're going to loop over basis functions a and b. And then for each basis function a and b, we'll loop over the primitive basis functions g a and g b. And our matrix element v a b will be equal to v a b plus the Coulomb integral uh, related to the nth nucleus, Gaussian A, Gaussian B, times the corresponding contraction coefficients. OK, so now that we've uh, defined all of our functions, let's go ahead and hop on over to MATLAB so that we can implement them. All right, going over to MATLAB. We're going to build these in the reverse order from the way that the functions will actually be called. So we're going to start with our edit voice. We're going to build that. All right. So this is going to be the function output equal boys of order n at location x. And we're going to, again, we're going to say if x equals 0, then output equals 1 divided by 2n plus 1. Otherwise, output equals the gamma function of order n plus 0.5 times the incomplete gamma function, gamma inc, of 
x n plus 0 0.5 uh, divided by 2 times x caret n plus 0.5. And that's it. And that's the that's our boys function. The next function that we're going to write is going to be the Coulomb G function, which is going to call that. So edit Coulomb G. Go ahead and do that. Pull that over a little bit. All right, function V equal Coulomb G. We're going to need to input a Gaussian one, Gaussian two, the uh, x, y, z location of our, of our nucleus and its atomic number as our inputs. So the first thing we're going to do is we want to get the exponents for g1 and g2 and calculate the location of the new Gaussian via the Gaussian product theorem. So a equals g1 dot alpha, b equals g2 dot alpha, p equal a plus b. Now we need to find its new location, which is just going to be the weighted location. So we're going to write this as one vector. P equals, see here, A times G1 dot X plus B times G1 dot X. A times G1 dot Y plus B times G2 dot Y. I realize we need to see our G2 dot X over there. Then we'll do the Z component, A times G1 dot Z naught plus B times G2 dot Z naught. All right divided by p, and the vector for location of our atom is just ax, ay, az, just our inputs. Now we need to know the square of the distance between a and p, so that's just going to be, we're going to call this r, p, a, 2 for squared, sum of a minus p dot caret so that's going to take it squared element by element, and we'll take the sum. Right. And then once we have that, uh, the only thing we need now is what is the, the amplitude of our new Gaussian function? We know its location. We know its exponent. What's the amplitude of it? We're going to get that by using the gprod1d functions that we already wrote. So see here, ex equal gprod1d, and we're going to give it g1.x0, a g2.x0, b. E y equals g prod 1 d g1 dot y naught a g2 dot y naught b and e z g prod 1 d g1 dot z naught a g2 dot z naught b. All right. And so now we're ready to calculate uh, what the Coulomb integral actually is. And that's going to be v equals minus. 1 times z, so minus 1 times our atomic number, times 2 times pi divided by p, times the Boyce function of order 0, and, lo, and, and argument p times rpa2. And then we need to multiply it by the contraction coefficients uh, for our primitives. So this is going to be, oh, not the cofaction, the normalization constant, excuse me, g1.n, g1.n times g2.n. That will give us the uh, integral for a particular, the Coulomb integral for a particular atom with atomic number z and two Gaussians, g1 and g2. And now we're ready to write the build nuclear attraction. Function VAB build nuclear attraction, taking in our basis functions, our list of nuclei, and list of atomic numbers. All right, so first thing we need is the total number of atoms. So we're going to say n atom equals size z2. And let's see here, the total number of basis functions in basis equal size basis 2. Okay, now we're going to loop over all of our atoms for n, capital N equals 1, 2, n atom. We're going to loop over all basis functions A, B, 
basis. For all basis functions B, for all the primitives in A, for NA equal 1 to basis function A dot N, for the primitives in B, and B equal 1 to basis B dot N. And da, 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 V A B A B equals V A B A B plus Coulomb G uh, basis A G and A basis B dot G then B and this is going to be AL N comma 1 for the X component Y component Z component and, all right, so that's our Coulomb integral, and now we have to multiply this by the appropriate contraction coefficient. So times basis A dot C of N A, and times basis B C and B. All right, and we missed out one little thing here, and that's we need to we need to initialize our VAB matrix to zero. Now that was a mistake on my part. So VAB equals zeros in basis in basis. All right, so let's check. We're gonna loop over all the atoms, all the basis functions A, all the basis functions B, all the primitives in A, all the primitives in B. VAB equal Coulomb BG basis Gaussian one, Gaussian two, X, Y, and Z of the atom z of the nucleus times the contraction coefficients. I think that should be correct. So we still I think that's right. I think we're done. So we'll go ahead and test it against some numbers. We still have our uh, two hydrogen atoms loaded up that are two angstroms apart. So let's just try this real quick. Build nuclear attraction basis AL and z. And those are the correct numbers, and I'll post those on the website so that you can take a look at your own code and make sure you get the right numbers. All right, so in the next video, video 4.3, we will build our four-dimensional electron-electron repulsion matrix, and that will be the last set of matrix elements that we need to build and compute before we can actually start doing our SCF routine and calculating the energy uh, of atoms within a molecule. All right, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you at the next video. Bye.